In this world of technology, things are ever changing, rearranging. You need someone to help you out. I know someone who can. Come and take a journey with me as we go through the land of technology. You'll never be alone. You'll be with Paul Amadeus Lane in the tech zone. Tech zone, Paul Amadeus Lane. Third and final segment of the show. A few weeks ago, I did a recap of my coverage of WonderCon. We had actor Kaz Anvar on. We had uh, Sharia Ashadoglu. I'm going to pronounce your name right, Sharia, one of these days. But I had an opportunity to catch up with Kaz, talk about the expand ending its run on, on sci fi. Was sci fi to blame for them not continuing on the network? You know, I really want to find out that answer, but I'm so happy that uh, Bezos over at Amazon decided to pick it up for season five and six. So let's ask Cass just the run he's had on The Expanse and what to look forward to in the future. And I'm so happy right now to have joined me, Cass Anvar from The Expanse. Actor extraordinaire. What's going on, brother? How are you? I'm good, Paul. I'm doing great. I'm very happy to be here. Very happy to see you again. Talk to you again. Great to talk to you, too. And Happy to be back. Yes, yes. Happy to be back. And you know, the last time we spoke was at WonderCon. And I remember you and I said, we're going to celebrate in Comic-Con for season four. But what we're going to do, we have a celebration right now because congratulations, my friend. Tell us how that all came about because I was sad when it went through the wire, when it said it was canceled. Man, yeah. I was just like, just so mad. But then a okay, few well, days we gotta, later, we gotta do happy dance first. Come on. Let's do it. Happy, happy dance. dance. There, there we go. go. We got it. We got it. We got it. Definitely. Okay, so tell so, us. Tell us how uh, that came yeah, about. After WonderCon, we unfortunately got the bad news that Sci-Fi had to cancel the show, um, and it was for a myriad of very, very complicated business-related reasons. Um, it certainly wasn't because of the quality of the show or the reviews or the fan reactions. Uh, you know, we had we had gotten our 100% on 100% on one Rotten Tomatoes, and all our reviews were were just off the charts, and <clears throat> everyone loved it. Uh, but it was getting can- it got canceled simply because of um, the type of show it was uh, was not jiving with the type of network that a traditional cable network is, which relies on live views and um, commercials in order to make their money. And when you're making a space opera, when you're doing a, one of these epic kind of like long journey type shows, our fans like to, to stream that. They like to binge it. You know, I know a bunch of people who will watch the entire season in one run. And that's a completely different way of watching television. Um, and it only existed in the last five years, six years, where that's become a thing. And traditional cable stations have a really tough time surviving because it's hard to sell commercials to that so um yeah it was just a it was just a mixture of things that happened and uh we ended up being canceled like it was sad and it was mournful and we all mourned it and we kind of laid it to rest but i was not um i don't know there's something about me that when something doesn't feel right when it's it's hard for me to take no for an answer when when something feels so right and like we had so much to do with this show episode seasons four and five are are so spectacular uh we've worked so hard to tell this story and to not be able to tell it to its fruition and it it, it broke my heart and to see <clears throat> the the team that we've grown to love you know so heartbroken by this it wasn't just a job a lot of this a lot of this was a for mo- many of us it was a family uh, that we got together to tell stories and um I just had to ask questions. I just had to go and I went to Sci-Fi and asked questions. I went to our production company and I asked questions and I found out, you know, a lot of answers that confused me as to why it was ending. Mm -hmm. So I just decided to do my thing. And I went out to the fans and I said, this is what's happening. This is what needs to happen. This is what we need to do. This is how we save the show. And uh, we were so fortunate that these fans, we have amazing fans, like aggressive, passionate, loving fans and they just went to town and they let everybody know especially amazon uh how much they love the show and uh i kept 
giving them information in terms of what is going to make a difference, what is going to show. And these guys did everything. Um, they bumped our ratings up double digits on Sci-Fi Network. Once we did the Save the Expanse campaign, wow. the ratings just went up. And uh, it just showed how powerful our fan base is. And they, they, hired, they paid for a banner to be flown over Amazon headquarters in, uh, in uh, Amazon. And <clears throat> they went and bought like custom made cupcakes and things and sent them to the office. And then all of a sudden, all these celebrities who had fallen in love with the show, George R. R. Martin, Rain Wilson, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, Greg Grunberg uh, from uh, Heroes, they all just started tweeting. And Will Wheaton, everyone just started going, you got to save the show. You got to save the show. Like, apparently the creator of Craigslist <laughs> contacted contacted uh, Bezos directly and said, there's a show that we think you got to save. And so Amazon and Bezos just got bombarded by fans of all natures and all backgrounds and all walks of life. And uh, apparently that's what did it. You know, that's hearing that from, uh, because what I did was I did a report on it like about, about a month ago about about it coming to Amazon and everything. And, and I played our little segment that we did at WonderCon. And, and I talked about how, how how you, you know, took the bull by the horn and said, hey, we got to save this. We got to do this. And it's kind of like that girl who breaks up with you. And then, you know, you're kind of like distraught. But then <clears throat> th this other beautiful, hot girl who got deep pockets, who gonna <laughs> love you to death. You're like, here we go. Talk about where we're at in the stream of time when it comes That's to... That's an interesting, interesting <laughs> analogy. That actually happened to me before. You, you just got dumped, but, you know, something better came along. <laughs> it's an interesting, interesting analogy. You know, you know pretty much that. It's, it sounds like you're talking from experience. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. And I, and I end up marrying this one. That's what I did. So, But, uh, <laughs> but you know, it, it, it really brings up a very good point where we come to the way we view content now. I'm a binge watcher myself, too, and I, and I love doing that. And talk about kind of like where we're going to come up against traditional television, where we have streaming content now. Do you think one is going to win over, or are both still viable today? Um, I don't think uh, I don't think traditional television uh, is going to survive forever. I think it's it's an old model. Uh, I think it's like that's like asking if VHS. Uh, um, tapes are, are going to be viable once DVDs came out and if DVDs are going to be viable once Blu-ray comes out and is Blu-ray going to be viable once uh, bandwidth and streaming be becomes accessible. It's like technology is growing and the, the way we tell stories is evolving and once you're able to stream <clears throat> you're no longer having the rules and, and regulations and, and restrictions that are dictated by the traditional kind of broadcast methods. Um, you're not restricted by time, you're not res restricted by content, you're not, you know, you're not censored. Um, and, and I think the audiences have matured to a point where they want to watch the show. Sorry, I'm just getting comfortable. No, no problem. Get, get, get comfortable, brother. The <laughs> they want to, they want to watch the show when they want to watch it, how they want to watch it, where they want to watch it, uh, and it, as often as they want to watch it. That's how we want to do it. And it makes total sense. It makes for a much more enjoyable experience. So the challenge is going to be how do the networks and the broadcasters and producers make that financially viable? How do they monetize a completely different model of storytelling? So that's what needs to happen. Yeah, you know? I, I totally agree because I look at some of the streaming content that we have now on Netflix, on Amazon, on the well, other CBC, uh, CBS has figured it out. I mean, sure they, created, they, they created their 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 own network, and uh, uh, you know they launched Star Trek on there to kind of draw everybody there. But they're they're ahead of the game. They're basically thinking, okay, CBS television is is days are numbered. People tuning in on a specific time on a specific day to watch their show. Which I'm not gonna lie, that's kind of fun too. You know, waiting every day, every week, one specific day, and you and your friends get together and have like a party. Uh, and watch Lost or watch The Expanse or watch Star Trek. I enjoy that. I love the ritual of that. Um, uh, but I think that having the party on whatever day you want and watching two or three episodes at a time uh, is going to be the way we end up going. And, and CBS, CBS, like I said, they've, they've kind of caught the, caught the train and they're creating their own streaming network and they're trying to figure out how to monetize it and, and all that. I do feel... <clears throat> 
personally, I don't think, um, and I think the networks have to get this clear, but I don't think the um, the, the general public is going to be willing to pay, uh, you know, ten or twenty dollars a month for every single different station. It's just not viable financially. We're not <clears throat> either. We're only going to buy one or two stations, and that's it. That's all we're going to watch. Or somebody's going to have to become the streaming cable network, like either Netflix or iTunes or somebody. No, I totally is agree. Gonna, is going to have to own the rights to distribute all of the streaming networks. Yeah. And then we we public people then buy a membership to one and get access to all because I don't think anyone's going to be spending two or three hundred dollars a month so that they can get all their <laughs> all their different stations. It's it's not really a, a viable financial model. That's true. It's like you go to the dollar menu and you say, I'm only going to get one dollar burger, but you end exactly up right. and spending like 30 bucks on, on food. Now, yeah. now you talked about this season of The Expanse being um, the best ever, your favorite. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is. It, I mean, every season has <clears throat> escalated and, and augmented in terms of uh, in terms of the story, in terms of the pace, in terms of the the content, even the, the actors and the characters, we've all kind of really sunk in and, 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 and grown and matured and the relationships have developed. But season three, um, I think the, the reactions I've been seeing is every episode tops the previous episodes. The story just escalates, the excitement, the drama, and it just keeps building and building and building. And <clears throat> I mean, I have to hand it to our writers and our directors. Like, it is so hard to do a show of this size and to maintain that kind of constant build and suspense and drama and action and, and not have these like dips and these these lulls and things like that. It's a, it's a monumental feat of, of writing and, and directing. Uh, and we actors are just blessed. We're blessed to be able to work with this material. Uh, and we're blessed to be able to work off the, the novels that these shows are based on because the action and the story of these these novels are amazing. So we have amazing source material to work from, but our writing room, you know, I, I, we, we are not worthy and we are very blessed <laughs> to have you. Uh, led by our, our champion and, and captain of the ship, Narain Shankar. <clears throat> so, uh, and season four, you guys, wait till you see the end of season three. Mm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I got, uh, I got gonna a chance. Blow, gonna blow your minds, gonna blow the doors <laughs> off. And then season four, it's like, Seasons one, two, and three are going like this in this direction, and all of a sudden, seasons four is going. Pew, you know, we're going, <laughs> we're going somewhere else. You know, and, uh, it's going to be a huge, wonderful shift in the energy of the show. You make up a very good point because I had a chance to, to to see the finale, and and I can't say anything until it airs. But you are absolutely right. In season three, man, it blew me away when Miller came back. I was like, because right? I. I often wonder where Miller was, man. He came back, had his nice little, yeah. nice little fedora hat on. I was like, wow, that's pretty sweet. And it was hard, man. It was hard not talking about it. Like everyone's going, what's going on? What happened to Miller? And I'm like, mm, mm, mm. take your time. You take played time. it close to the best too when we entered when I interviewed you at uh at uh, at WonderCon, man. You would you wouldn't let anything leak. I was trying, and you was like, just blue, blue, oh, blue. No, read the book. Read the book. There you, you go. Know what's going on? Read the book. I'm supposed to be your buddy, I man. You. He's supposed to be your buddy, man. He's supposed to let me know. <laughs> hey, but before we let you go, I just want to give some props out to you and the crew. Uh, you, uh, Dominique, uh, West, and and also uh, also Jim. You guys were in all 36 episodes for for three seasons, and and that's awesome. You guys are the only four to do that. Talk about that accomplishment. Um, it is. It, I mean, we have we have really bonded and grown uh, as a family. Uh, the four of us, you know, we're we get every single week. We're shooting every week. We rehearse every Sunday. We get together. We have lunch and dinner and rehearse the scripts like crazy. It, it's it's an unusual experience because we uh, actually get really really close. Um, and to be able to to go through all of this together, to have come to that kind of close call. You know where we almost i mean we did say goodbye we said goodbye to the show uh we all got together and there's lots of tears and crying and <clears throat> we said goodbye and we kind of had to mourn the loss of it and that was a very painful experience um i just i just didn't tell anybody that i wasn't ready to let go yet uh mm -hmm. but we did kind of let go and then to have it being 
gifted back to us again by by our fans. Um, it I, I, we haven't even gotten together since we haven't wow. even gotten together since we've. Uh, it's going to happen, I think, uh, this this week. This weekend, we're all going to, to LA to do a special screening of the finale and uh, give a thank you to all the big heavy hitting fans and celebrities that. Um, that helped bring the show back. Uh, and that's going to be an interesting reunion because it's the first time we've all been together since uh, the show got picked up. So I'll let, awesome. you know, I'll let you know how that goes. I'm looking it's forward to it. Lots of tears. Definitely. And, and, and hopefully I'm a beg and plead with uh, <clears throat> the powers that be that I'm there for the finale. So I can see you guys in person. And, and, I, and I want to apologize to Steven. I called him by his, his, uh, his, his holding name. His holding name. So I'm sorry. Sorry, Steven. Don't. You know what? The, the four Rossi crew, we are, we are the characters. It's cry, it's crazy. It's like it, it is kind of scary how close we are to our characters. I mean, with the exception of Wes, <laughs> Wes is not kind of like a demented sociopath in, in the sense that uh, that Amos is. But uh, we are very, very similar to our characters. Uh, the things that happened, even even with this whole kerfuffle of of losing the show and getting the show back. <clears throat> We found ourselves in in very much a uh, a Rossi crew type of mentality. Trying to um, Alex would have tried to keep the family together. That's what. He that's true. Done. That's true. And, that, and that's one thing I really loved about your character. We saw that maturation. You know, when it when the season when the um, season um, continued after WonderCon, we talked about and um, and and the interaction with you and your family. You know yeah. that that video. You know that 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 touch. You know that that's like real. And that's one thing yeah. with the writers and everything. You were spot on, and that was really. Exactly. He's a man who has a very deep and rich uh, history. He has a lot of life experience um, that is a little more traditional. It's a little more uh, relatable to the audience. <clears throat> Most of our our Rossi crew have been through these insane backstories and histories. They're all basically have superhero origins. Whereas Alex is like a, it's like an everyman. Alex is like he's like a family man. He's like a he's like a an ex-military family man with a wife and kid and who is tortured and tormented by wanting to fly his ship, but also wanting to have been a good family, a good husband, a good father, a good Martian, because there's a lot of pressure on, on the Martian culture to behave in a way that is um, uh, positive and constructive and productive towards the Martian goal, which is to terraform the planet. So you either have to either have to have lots of babies, create a lot of population, he, or you work on terraforming, or you work in the military. And Alex um, kind of was didn't really do any of that well because he was trying to figure himself out, and he was playing his own tune. And uh, he got to discover a lot of who he really is during the three seasons of the show, and that's it's kind of an admirable thing to see a man. Uh, actually face his failures, face his challenges, and man up to them. And I, I kind of admire Alex for that. I really do. It's a, he, he, he's able to teach me a lot of lessons because he didn't run away from them once once he started to recognize what was happening and who he was. He, he faced them. And uh, it's something we should all do. That's so true. And to give you some more props out there, too, with the writing, a yeah. lot of people in real world can learn a lot from yeah. what's going on in the expanse and how to work That's together right. And, right. and how to love one another. And I was really critical about sci-fi when they, when they, when they canceled the show, because, and I said it right after they got through with SG one, the SG one series, uh, um, universe and Atlantis to me, it's like sci-fi loss. What I fell in love with was sci-fi when he used to show mystery science theater, you know, it's like things yeah. have changed. So, but, but I'm glad, I'm glad I you're back. I wouldn't be too hard on sci-fi though, because they, they, uh, it's almost like they had no choice. They were losing money on the show because of the model. Gotcha. And, uh, gotcha. you know, I talked to the heads of sci-fi and they basically told me we have never had to let a show go that we thought was this great wow. before. We just can't sustain it. And so it's it was just kind of a, uh, it was almost like a no choice situation. So they, they, we just couldn't make it work. So thank God for the fans and thank God for Jeff Bezos and thank God for Amazon that they wouldn't let this story go untold. And hopefully now we get to do at least two more seasons, get it get it wrapped up the way it should be, if not more. Absolutely. Because, That's what because we, got, we got nine novels. Yes. And we're only going to be hitting book four uh, starting uh, 
start next season. So we got nine novels that we can we can chew up if we want to. Definitely, and I, and I hope so because I'm looking forward to it. And thank you for sharing that inside about uh about a uh, sci-fi network too uh, yeah, about no, they're 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 good people they are good people and they they really love the show so um you know i wouldn't i, I don't have any bad bad things to say about them. okay sounds good so i'll take that back i'll retract i'll definitely do that okay. of, but, but but i'm glad i'm glad that you, you cleared that up because yeah because we because we, us fans man we were just like what is going on but you're right yeah you know, it's they, a complicated world out, out there now, man. Like, you know, art and, and story have less and less to do with uh, being able to stay on the air. It's, uh, it's a numbers game, and sometimes it's such a complicated numbers game that we can't even understand it. The, the, the average every day. That's why I had to go online, and that's why I had to talk to the fans. I had to tell yeah. them. <laughs> I had to tell them how to watch TV. Yes. Because the way they were watching TV was hurting the show. And that's not their fault. They're allowed to watch the TV wherever, wherever they true. want, however that's they true. want. But if it means the show is going to get canceled, then maybe they might want to know yeah, that's true. how to do it. Like <laughs> It literally makes a difference if you watch the show live or if you watch it four days later on our DVR. So those, those, that variable there affects how the show's success goes. And nobody knows that. I didn't know that. That's true. So I just, I just told the fans, I said, watch the show live, watch the show live. And all of a sudden, boom, our ratings went up and, and, and chaos and all sorts of stuff started happening. So uh, it, it just changed the equation. Wow. Well, thank you so much for educating us on that too. And we're glad that, that the show is coming back uh, to Amazon yeah. Yeah, season four and Stay five. Stay passionate though. Yes, fans. we will. Stay passionate. Uh, yes. because it's because of your passion and your fire and everything that's why we came back so uh that's the most important message to give you guys is you have power you have the power to have an impact you can make a difference uh if your voice is heard in an organized and and structured and strategic way I like you that. have a lot of power i like that structured and strategic way not <laughs> not not the abusive way insults exactly. and everything i'm glad that you said that and thank you exactly. so much for taking time out of your busy schedule i know you're, you're you're filming and doing everything so thank you so much for for talking to us and i look My forward pleasure. to seeing you maybe at the, the screen at the finale if not i will see you at wondercon and we will celebrate like champions we'll like have some before, margaritas at san diego yes sure we're gonna be at san diego we'll have, we'll have some margaritas and some beers and all that <laughs> other good stuff all right yeah some martian whiskey let's do it great talking to you my friend you too brother once again, a huge shout out to my brother, Tad. <clears throat> Once again, a huge shout out to my brother, Kaz Anvar. Love chatting with him. And hopefully he and I get a chance to hang out at San Diego Comic Con. We'll post it on social media. Yes, we will. And don't forget, if you have no idea what The Expanse is all about, this space opera, catch up now on Amazon Prime. Check it out. Season uh, five and six is coming. So you don't want to be left behind. Always enjoy talking to me like a little dance we did too. Yeah, a little dance. All right. This is the extent of our show. So don't forget to check back with us next week for some more great guests and some more content. Take care, folks. In this world of technology, things are ever changing, rearranging. You need someone to help you out. I know someone who can. Come and take a journey with me as we go through the land of technology. You'll never be alone. You'll be with Paul. I'm a dead slain in the tech zone.